So I got my trees planted in the orchard area. We've got uh, two Halls Hardy almonds here. We've got one and two. They are both decent size. I'm lining the driveway with them because they have very pretty flowers and that's kind of the theme we've gone with here. And then coming into the rest of the area, I've got a few other things. This is a jujube and that one's a jujube. And then we've also got two service berries. I've got quite a bit more coming in that'll be more of the native variety, but these are cultivars specifically for doing a good edible crop. So that's what those ones are. Then I also wanted to show you what I ended up doing here to kind of protect them. This again is in the yard with the chickens. I uh, don't see chickens around anywhere right the second. They've got a lot of area they can cover, but with that, I can't really mulch around these. I've tried that before, it doesn't work. So what I've done is I've taken some fencing and I've used these for tomato cages before where I'll take some thick gauge fencing, um, wrap it around in a cylinder and then zip tie it together in a few places. And then you can stake that down and that provides a very big, very hefty tomato cage. And if your tomatoes are doing well, you pretty much need that. So what I did is I took those cages and then cut it off in sections. So most of them have about three rungs on them. Uh, there are a few that just have two, but when I cut them off, I cut them with the bottom of one of these lines sticking out. And so that way it's got places sticking out all around the bottom that can be used instead of stakes. So I don't have to stake any of these in. So what I did is I took some cardboard and I cut a hole in it, cut a line, and then a hole, and I slid it in there around um, each tree. And then I have put these cages down and I just poke those straight through the cardboard and they stick right down into the ground. They're very secure. So I've got that. And what I'll do is I'll come back with whatever I have on hand for extra mulch. I probably won't use my wood chips because I have plans for all those, but I'll use probably leaves and I can fill those up with leaves. I've got pine needles sometime during the year. We've got a few pine trees, uh, grass clippings, whatever, dump a scoop of compost in there, but it'll hold whatever I put in there in that area, in that little mini cage there. It'll also protect them from the chickens so they don't eat the fresh leaves that are sprouting out or the buds or anything like that. And it also protects the mulch and whatever I have under there from getting scratched away by the chickens as well. So that should work out really well in theory. Um, we'll see how it works. I had done something similar up here with the pawpaws. I think I'd pointed it out in my earlier, one of the earlier videos. This is one of those pawpaws here and the cage used to be up this tall and I cut it all the way down to there so that I could harvest the rest of it to use for many of these other trees. So these still actually had some newspaper down because that was originally what I had done. I'd used a whole tomato cage, newspaper on the bottom, and then mulched it up. And so the newspaper was still there. There wasn't much growing grass wise. So I took some of these newspaper, uh, it's like shredded newspaper that came in the shipment of plants I just got. And so I went ahead and used that up, used that as the mulch and that'll just keep anything else at bay. And when I go around and mulch all these, I'll throw something on top of that as well. So I did that with that one. There used to be a pawpaw here. It didn't make it. I double checked, it was gone. So it's officially gone. And here's the other remaining pawpaw. I've got, I think, 25 pawpaws coming in sometime in the next few weeks. And they will be, again, more of the native variety I'm getting through one of the state um, nurseries. I don't remember. I'm doing some from Maryland, some from Iowa, some from Missouri. Those are the ones that were the cheapest and provided the varieties I wanted, lots of edibles. So um, when I get those pawpaws in, I might replace one pawpaw down there. I might put some of them further down at the bottom here. I've got a little extra room. But as you can see, I've got the, um, the apples and the pears. All of them are now caged at the bottom and they all have cardboard at the bottom. They'll all get mulch. I've got some peaches down here and some plums as well. Um, those are the jujubes way out there and the almonds. Um, if you remember where those were. Then coming over here, 
I've actually got two cherries. So I've got a cherry right over here and another cherry right down there. And those are decent size. They're also um, in an area that gets a lot of leaves, a lot of mulch naturally from this kind of hedgerow that grows along the fence. And it's kind of shaded a little bit. So it doesn't really have much of a problem with weeds and grass as much. Uh, I can always do a push mower, weed eater, pull them by hand, you know, whatever. Any ones that seem a little too big or too troubling, I can deal with that pretty easily. So I didn't cage those up, but everything else is caged. Um, another thing that I guess I might point out is if you see these weird, like, trenches, the idea here was that swales would have been perfect for this spot because it is on a gradual slope down. It's not too steep, but it's steep enough that it would have been nice to trench it kind of in between each row. And it's roughly in rows. I didn't do it perfectly to make it look a little more natural and I just put them in where they fit well. But roughly they're in rows and I could have done trenches all the way down and then on the berms planted the fruit trees and that would have caught the waters that came down. If you know what swales are, then that makes a lot of sense to you. If not, look it up. But what I did instead that was actually doable for me is I dug little trenches. So what I did is I worked with the contour. So the contour of this hill for this tree, for example, is up this way and it flows straight down pretty much in this direction towards the tree. So what I did is I dug a trench in front of the tree and then I dug it out up some and then up some that way in a V shape. And that way as water runs down, it'll hit the edges and it'll come straight down and fill up this area and that'll kind of soak in a little extra. Um, I had built it up a little bit on the back end to kind of hold some of that in. The chickens kind of dealt with some of that so that's not built up like it originally was. But that's the, that's the idea and that's what I did. You can see the trench there. You can see the slight trench here. And as water comes down, it's gonna catch one of these. It's either gonna fill up this trench and make sure that this tree gets well fed and water soaks in there, or if it misses that and comes straight down, it's gonna run into this trench and go to that tree. And so pretty much all these trees have that, except for the ones I just planted, the jujubes, the service berries and the almonds, and then the decorative trees. So in front of the almonds, um, along that fence row, I've got a red bud that's a light, like light green leafed variety. So that should be pretty cool. They're called rising sun res red buds. Then I've got some sort of uh, decorative cherry tree right there that has some pretty pink blossoms. And then I've got uh, standard red buds after that. And so those ones I didn't trench, they're decorative. I didn't really worry about it. And the ones I did today, um, I just have so much else to do. Uh, I might get to it at some point, but not now. So I think that's it. And I uh, will get back to you after the next step.